Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this the second quarter final of this Asian Cricket 2022. What kind of game we have on here? Peter House taking on Vindok. Got down the ground to only me first runs. Bit of a misfield. It makes it a lot easier for Mudimu. Ken Arnold on strike on the back of his 50 yesterday. He's definitely a man in form. He's got a knack for titles <laughs> off late after having retained the Super um, 8 hockey tournament as captain. So he'll be looking to bring that fortune into that Peterhouse camp for this tournament. Alongside a couple of his other mates, Henry Van Veek, going into Baller's second one. Top four, down quarterly, Peter Ken on strike. Down the ground is Ken, a very electric little player. Mudimu is quite keen for two, but Arnold not keen at all. And that says a lot already about this Peter House pair. Will be looking to steal all those little singles. Six runs to win. Six balls to be won. So definitely have to be staying awake in the field. DDs are uh, Vindhu College boys. Snugs it down the ground to that backward point region. Getting themselves to tally of three. Strike rotation seems quite good between these two. Get the iron. Whilst at the same time. Turn around, there's a track going on behind you. Well stopped there. With one ball to go. Tell you what, Henry Van Fake has done a really good job to restrict them to any three up to now. You're looking to cap it off. And Ken Arnold just nudges it down and tell you what, inside the circle, that running between these two is causing problems for the in-circle fielders. And that brings Peter Haas a T4 with that loss after the first over. Simba Mudimu, Ken Arnold currently at the crease. Gerard Janssen van Rensburg to come from the Hartman House end. I beg your pardon, that's Adelita from the Hartman House end. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Man on strike is Kian Arnold. Pulls that one away, finds the gap, Kian Arnold, tell you what, a man in form, proving that. And that's his account in terms of the boundaries. Waited for it, was pitched quite short, and made full use of the freebies he's been offered. Peterhouse now, eight without loss. And again, same shot, same area, just short of the rope and gets himself another boundary. One week and a half. Ado Lita will be under pressure here. Ken Arnold, definitely playing around with his mind now, but just been pitching a little too short. And making full use of what's been offered. And they've put a man there. Maybe just change your length. One would think, but a really good stop for Peter House. Exactly what they would have, have done at the start. Just put the bowlers under pressure. Going 
guides that one down. And that is just sensible cricket from Ken Arnold. Two boundaries. Tell you what, I'm going to give my mate a turn as well. Simba Mutimu now on strike. Left handed bat. And Adelita will be under a bit of pressure now. Conceded nine right. in the over. Three to go. He's having to change his field around now. Straight past the bowl up. And that's one brilliant shot. Will it get the boundary? And yes, he has. Tell you what, these Peterhouse openers are absolutely on fire. Showing us what they're making at Olita. He unfortunately hasn't had it all his way in this over. Looking at the coaching staff of Falcon. They're on the edge of their seats. Off to a cracking start, these two. Adolita will be keen to see the end of this over without continuing too many more. 13 with two to go. And I got it done again. I talk about that. Brilliant running the wickets to come back for two. Can you believe it? CBC have won it on the last ball. The last ball. Scarred it down and steals a quick single, these two. Brilliant batting Simamudimu, but unfortunately overthrows will allow Kian Arnold and Simamu to get back across. And that ball crosses the boundary, so a really expensive over. Really expensive over. And it's really set Peter House up, up and away. That 140 total that the captain chatted about earlier at the toss could really be a thing right now. In less exciting news, and then they're batting first. Henry Van Fake comes back after his brilliant first over, only conceding four. But tell you what, current score is 24 without loss after two overs. But for Ken Arnold deals with that adequately and deposits that for six. A man on fire, true form. Tell you what, that is definitely not fluke. He's off to a cracking start. Peter House, after just 2.1 overs, find themselves with 30 runs on the board. Through the cover region, coming back for two. This is amazing cricket we're seeing. Proper T20 cricket and strong contenders. Like we heard Dion Meyer say earlier, he expected Peter House to be part of that final, and as of now, they're looking well on their way. Already under pressure in this over. Very early on as well. Oof. Having to kick that one away. Simba <laughs> Mudimu. Heart and mouth stuff over here. Looking for the big one, gets on one knee, sweeps it and gets his boundary. Top form are these two in. Great shot there from Simba Mudimu. Mudimu. All sorts of problems after 2.4 overs, finding himself 37 to the good. Oh, Peter House. The score is 37 for the loss of no wickets. A breakthrough is something that's really, really needed at the moment for these Vinduk boys. Because all, at the moment, it's all going Peter House way. Respecting the good one. Our ball. And that's almost a replica of his last shot. But unfortunately, not getting the boundary. Much credit to Harry Van Veek.
And at the end of the third over, Peter House 38 without loss. A very brilliant start from these two Ken Arnold, Simba Mudimu, Alter Cracker. Interesting to see how the Vindok boys will react to this one. A cracking start. But tell you what, they offer of grit after getting over CBC yesterday late in the afternoon and what was an exciting one. So they do have the flair to do so. Don't write them out. A quick change already in the bowling attack for Windhoek. Henry or a big upon Honro Badenhorst brought into the attack very early on. I tell you what, that change within the bowlers is brought within the first breakthrough. Mutimu has to depart for 18. Very well played 18. Two boundaries was really looking good, and like I had just pointed out, do not write this Vindok side out. Very even contest we've got going on here, looking very good at the moment. Tell you what, no better place to be for your Saturday afternoon's entertainment. Man walking in now, Sean Bennett. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, amongst Zim Cricket circles, that name needs no introduction. Off to a flyer, so he won't be under too much pressure, especially when you've got Kian Arnold on the opposite end doing what he's doing. Can allow himself to see himself to see to see himself in, work his way in. And then join his mate. But Henry Van Veek bringing the breakthrough. Very much needed after 3.1 overs, 38 runs. Going now and down to get himself off the mark. And those two look electric, very well stopped there. They're running in between the wickets, running very hard. Respecting the good one is Kian Arnold. Hano Badenhorst really bringing some sort of a calm influence into this Vindok side after the start they had to encounter. Guiding that one down to steal a quick single Brilliant running between these two, Arnold and Bennett. And that's been a hallmark of Peter House's game up to now. Just keep that scoreboard ticking and that's exactly what they're doing. Currently scoring at a rate of 10 and over. Played right through the covers but that man at sweeper will protect that. To keep it down to just a single. the gap will it have the legs to get over the line being yeah, shot Kian Arnold a little cut shot to move his tally to 25 and Peter House move on to 45 runs after four overs one wicket to Vindux account 
Hano Bodenhorst with an amazing over really. Calmed it down. But Kieran Arnold stealing the show of that over right at the end. So at the end of 4.45. Henry Van Fake to come back to ball his third over. Good start, full. Very well stopped, a bit short from Van Veek. Had he missed that, probably just past the boundary ropes. So very well stopped there. Henry doing such an amazing job for Peterhaus. I beg your pardon for Vinduk. Cracking over his head, freeing his arms, Sean Bennett's eggs. And that's an amazing piece of fielding to stop a certain four runs. But two runs to the good. A cracking shot, but a brilliant piece of fielding. Franco Berg. Guides that one down to steal a little single. Forward at all. To have a lapse in concentration, as these two have shown that running between the wickets is something they're very more than capable of doing. Very tight single. Will it get a no? Just like I had alluded to. Another quick single stolen right at the end of that over to bring Peter House to 49 for the loss of one wicket after overs. Kieran Arnold settling himself into this game. 26 runs for him. Off only just 12 balls. Bodnost is brought back into the attack. The wicket taker for Vindok. Straight down the ground and stopped. It's an amazing effort. He doesn't know where it is. But that's a top stop from Bodnost. Off his own bowling. Never easy to do. And always quite scary. Just uses the pace on that. Does it get the bounce? Yes, it does. Smart thinking that and well fielded as well. As a top spin is also something to consider. And that brings that single brings Peterhouse to their 50. Brilliant bowling there by Bodenhorst. At the moment, he really looks to be um, the Namibians' talisman with the ball. And again, using the pace is Bennett looking for two. Smart call by Arnold. No thanks, mate. Just 
guys, that one doesn't... <laughs> putting pressure on the batsman with that quick running between the wickets. I mean, on the fielder, I beg your pardon. Would want to go in the over. Bennett on strike. Wide called. Not being able to see off this over just as yet. <clears throat> Put away for a quick single to end the over. Barden almost having really done a good job to slow this run rate down. Being brought into the attack quite early on. At the end of six, Peter House of 51. Big important 54 for the loss of one wicket. And with that signal brings the end of the first power play. All fielding restrictions will be put to bed. And Windhoek will finally have an opportunity to put their men whenever they want them to. To swat this attack by Arnold and Bennett. A new man into the attack, Gerard Jans van Rensburg. Short and adequately dealt with. Cut the man. I can only have a single off of that. But for an Arnold plucks that out. Gerard Jansi van Rensburg with a good start to his spell. Short. Arnold pulls but finds the man. Top stop against the top spin. Plucks it out again. Very good length being bowled by Van Janssen van Rensburg. Like singles, not so much. More than that. Fall and pulled. Finding the man again. But these two sneak through two singles to keep the scoreboard ticking. And bring it into the over. I beg your pardon, with one more to go. And a wide to the good, giving Arnold another chance in this over. And that's a beautiful stroke down the ground to bring Arnold's tally to 35. And at the end of seven overs, Peter House 64 for one. A new man brought into the attack now. Janssen van Vuren.
Not the greatest start for Janssen van Furen. Starting over the wide. Getting into a stride, a play and a miss from Bennett. A slow one, working to the good, and that finds Bennett. Walking back, the slow one, having worked from Janssen Van Vuren, he gets the second scope. Parker taking a brilliant catch and that change in pace really having foxed Bennett who unfortunately has to walk back. Campbell McMillan will be the new man in for Peter House. Let's hear it for him. Peter House crowd, let's hear it for the new batsman. So after 7.2 overs, current score 65 for 2. New man in, Campbell McMillan taking his guard. Pucks that one out. his arms on just a second ball to earn himself a boundary Campbell McMillan what a way to introduce yourself and that moves Peter Hoss score to 69 for two with two balls to go in this seventh over Expects the next one, just guides it down past Ken Arnold, who crosses ends with him. Slow one wide, stab down to that point region. Direct hit could have had him in trouble, but these two are lightning quick. Grease lightning between the wickets are these Peterhouse boys at the end of eight overs. Current score 71 for two. Gerard Jansen van Rensburg comes back to ball his second over. Man on strike. Arnold. Short. Just dabbed down the ground. Looking for two. But well fielded there. To restrict them to just one. Short and pulled. Will he find the boundary? Looking for two, but no. Very well stopped. Restricting him to just one. A good workout 
on the outfield. Play to the ground. Brilliant work again in the outfield. And this time managed to come back for two. Bit of a late start sent to the wrong end. Macmillan in comfortably. And Arnold strolls to the danger end, which was in that situation. Gets there comfortably. 75. 76 for two after 8.4. Gerard Jansen van Rensburg stitching together a decent over. No boundaries conceded yet. He'll definitely be looking to keep it that way for the rest. Two balls to go in this one. Don't want to jinx him. Carries on. It is brilliant over. One ball to go. Straight back to the man. And that, unfortunately, is the end of the very dangerous looking Campbell McMillan. Gerard Janssen van Rensburg getting the third run of his over. Straight back to the bow line. He takes an easy catch for him. Now, the lanky figure of James Gow makes his way to the middle. And after nine overs, Peter House, 76 for three. New man in. Okay, decent uh, speed or rate, oh, Peter House. Franco Berg is introduced to the attack. Straight through the gap and finds the boundary. Does Kier Arnold to move his tally to 44? Peter Haas. During the way, 80 for 3 after 9.1. Straight to the fielder, but tell you what, if you're running that quick, that single is easy to come by, putting even more pressure on the batsmen, uh, on the fielders, as overthrows mean they can come back for a second. Forty-six for Kian Arnold. Down the ground, looking to come back for two. Certainly, running with full intent. Smart call, no. To move it seven. Man on strike now. James Gell to face his first delivery. That's a shaky start there. For him, Franco Birch getting that one to slide past his bat.
with one to go in this over. And that's a nice way to cap off the over for Peter House. Tell you what, when James Gow is not kicking between the poles on field 11, plays nice ground to end the 10th over. 84 for 3. Herard comes back for his third over. Cracking shot through the covers. And unfortunately that's spilt and gets over the boundary line. For James Gow, for James Gow's first stunter, looking very good. Bit of a slow one, just puts Willow to the leather. To sneak in a single. Man on strike now is Kian Arnold, 47. Good. Stitching together a good one here is Herod. A bit full, and Arnold just guides that one down to move his tally to 48 runs. Final ball the over. James go on strike. 90 for three. Shot. Using that flick of the wrist to earn his side a single at the end of the 11th over. Ninety-one for three after eleven. Kian Arnold, James Gard currently at the crease. They had talked about one forty at. The toss, I tell you what, that 140 is looking well within reach. Should be getting a lot more if they carry on at this rate. Jack Parker is the new man and brought to make good use of that leather. Parker starts with a short one, which is just guided down by Gao. Guys, that one down and scampers across quickly for one. Kian Arnold coming back for two, ladies and gentlemen. That brings Kian Arnold's 50. Let's hear it for him. Top effort, Kian. Just like he did yesterday, gets across 50 today. 
Two fifties in two days, tell you what, that's the only Arnold in that household who could ever do that. And that's a quick single to bring Gao on strike. Gets an edge on that one, does Gao, fortunately, away from the keeper, gets himself across for a single. Pulled beautifully by Kian Arnold, finding the man on the ropes though, for a top effort, to only just one, a little too short by Parker. Got away with that one. Top running between these two, putting pressure on the fielders. Direct hit, but tell you what, James Gull was past the line to end the over for Peter Haas. Beautiful running between these two. 12 overs gone, 99 for three. Kian Arnold, soon after getting his 50, currently lies at 52, just off 32 balls. Tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, at the toss, Tendakama Tarajika, the Peter Haas captain, did talk about a 140 score. That's what they would have been happy with. 99 after 12 overs. They should be demolishing that mark. And Franco Berg comes back to ball his second over. <laughs> Pulled, but finds the man at just a single. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Peter House as they've got into their 100 mark. Edges that one, but does not catch James Gow. That's a second edge. And just as many overs. Two lives cat sized. <laughs> Franco Berg, all sorts of problems for James Gow. Over the top, just whoops it across to mid off. <laughs> and that's deposited for a maximum. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Kian Arnold is on fire!
Please don't hit the little kids next time, bud. Appreciate it. Stop showing off. Hallmark of a top batsman after depositing a maximum just lets that one down gently and at the end of 13 overs Peter has found themselves 107 for 3 So change will be made. So big Henry Van Vake comes in, comes back into the attack to ball his fourth over. Dancing down the track. James Gill to bring his tally to 13. Quick single stolen there. Kian Arnold moves his tally to 60. Peter House 109 for 3 after 13.2 overs. A big stride back. And that'll be a dot ball exactly what. What did he concede? Van Vake, yeah. So he ends his spell having conceded 27 runs. Short whipped straight down the Taken, and that brings, ladies and gentlemen, the end of Ken Arnold. Jack Parker takes a beautiful catch. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for this top effort. Ken Arnold, 62 runs. Captain first 15 right here. Ross. Is he captain of first 15? Who was it? Yeah. It was Ross. Hey, Brandon. New man in. Ross Mills. Strides out to the middle. That's the big break that Vindok College would have wanted.
Ross Mills scampering away for a single. James Gill wants two. Brilliant running from this pair. Good call from James Gill to bring back Ross Mills. He gets off the strike. Off his mark, rather. Whipping that one away. Just for a single. Franco Beer having a few <laughs> five as of now on this over. And taking arguably the, the biggest wicket in this game as of now. Cracking shot down the ground. James Gull kept to just one to bring the end of the 15th over. Peterhouse currently find themselves 118 for the loss of four wickets. Five overs remaining. Twenty runs, oh, I beg your pardon. Twenty-two runs away from that figure that the captain Tienakai Motalanyuka had said they wanted to get to. With five overs to go, it should be quite a doable thing because they are going at about seven runs and over. Janssen van Rensburg bowling his final over, starts at the dot ball James Gull freeing up those opening drive gets a boundary to move his tally to 21 runs And again, two steps towards, dances down the track, straight past the bowler's feet for another boundary. Really attacking um, Janssen van Rensburg here is James Gull. Deciding that this is the over. And cut goes past the fielder. Will it be cut off? And yes, that's a top effort in the field. Coming back for two is James Gow, but a credit to the fielders. Kristen cutting that one off. Top effort. Dodds is down the track again. But the Vindok boys had learnt their lesson and plugged the man right there. Skied it, man under it, but tell you what, he's to no good as Ross Mills deposits a six. And that after 16 overs, Peter Hassel 135 for the loss of four wickets. What did he concede? The bowler. And at the end of his four overs, Franco Berg. He finishes with figures of 39 for one. Peter House, five runs short of their target that they wanted to, with four overs to go.
James wasn't even ready though. Jeez. Was that my fault? <laughs> yeah, I was panicking. And I thought I talked when he was. Yeah, he didn't bother. Whooped across by James Gow. He moves his tally to twi uh, 29 runs. Peter House 136 for four. After 16.1. One for eight are Zach's figures. Lightning speed, but worked away by Rossmills, who now has 10 runs to his name. Bit of a slow one. But unfortunately, called wide by the umpire. Peter House edging ever closer, just two runs away from that uh, figure that they said they'd have been happy with. So they're going to absolutely smash that. Down the ground. Cut off nicely for just a single. Straight down the ground, well over, I beg your pardon. 140 is where Peter House find themselves now after 16.4 overs. Tender Kama Tarindi, wherever you are, I'm sure you're smiling. Peter House captain, they wanted to get 140 runs in this inning and they've done so with a few to spare. Unfortunately, Fox there, but managing to save himself. One hundred and forty-two for four after seventeen overs. Our Peter House. Jack Parker comes back for his second over. Pulled away. Will it find the gap? Oh, unfortunately, making a mess of it. Unfortunately, the two Vindok boys 
almost clashing. Ross Mills gets that one in between them. To move his score to 16, Peter House 146 for the loss of four wickets after 17.1 overs. It is that one, and unfortunately, he's the man, and that brings the end of the dangerous looking Ross Moore, 16 or 7. Really kept that scoreboard ticking. But Jack Parker with the breakthrough for Vindok. efforts notably across at Falcon but 146 for the loss of five wickets Jack Parker having taken that sculpt Jack Parker one for 12 after his 1.2 so really economical for a side Quick single to get himself off, off the mark, a colleague Steen. Brilliant cricketing death. Peter has to have only in form four, so two more years of seeing this man. Jane one runs. Opening himself up. Will you get two from that? Will be quite a tight one. Xteen gets back with ease to move Peter House to 148.45. And on the other fields, Helenic find themselves 90 for four after 13 overs. Cracking cut shot. James Gow moves his tally. Thirty-seven runs. And for any locals that would be interested, St George's and Canyons also taking on Churchill. They find themselves one hundred and seven for eight after seventeen overs. An attempted pull shot, but does not get as much as he would have wanted to have. Heading the top of his bat, probably. And that brings the end of Jack Parker's brilliant over. Peter House are now, after 18 overs, 154 for five. Two overs to go. So, 14 runs above where they said they'd have liked to have ended. Dancing down the ground, slaps it across and finds the man very brilliantly stopped. Running two. Oh, top effort from these Peter House batsmen. 
And that's James Gard to move his tally to 40 10 away from his 50. Dancing down the track. Hot and mild stuff there from James Gall. Man on strike now, Cole Eckstein. Smart cricket, quick single. Forty one runs, James Gull. Three to go in this over. Dancing down the track. Has he found the man? Yes, he has. And unfortunately, he's dropped. And I'm pretty sure that's the second time he's been dropped in this encounter. James Gill. Is that Mike? I think it was. It was instinct. Shame. Cracking shot and a valiant effort. 47 runs. Peter Haas, 160 for 5 after 18.4. Fall short of the man. James, mate, if your mum is somewhere around here, can't imagine how fast the hot beat is at the moment. Stop it. And after 19 overs, 165 for five. With only six balls remaining, man on strike. James Gow, Hamiz, as he's known around the corridors of Peter House. Janssen van Furen comes back for his third over. One for 14 are his current figures. Pidas, as far as they're concerned, having done an amazing job. 140 is where they'd like to find themselves. 165 is where they lie, with one over to go. Dancing down the track. To move his score to 49. Guiding that one down very smartly is Cole Eckstein, but a top effort inside the ring to cut it down to just one. Hanru with a top effort there, quite a tall guy, getting down there. 49, James Gill. Getting across for his 50. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for James Gow. 50 runs.
Nikita Haas, 168 for five. With three balls remaining. Trying some innovation is Mr. Eckstein, but unfortunately loses his wicket. Janssen van Buren will be quite chuffed with that. And the skipper walks in with just two balls remaining. He'll be a happy man. 140 is all they wanted, 168 is what they've got. Janssen van Vieren, 2 for 17 after 2.4. Very good spell from him. Just two to go. Let's see what the skipper's made of. Side note, he also has a couple of under-19 World Cup appearances under his belt. Just guiding that one down. And other than Keon Arnold, no better man to have the last say in terms of the batting. James Gull. Big swing, but they scurry across for a single, ladies and gentlemen, and that will be it. Peter Haas will end with a score of 170, making it 171 to win for the Namibians. Vendok do have a couple of exciting batsmen within their ranks.
So, welcome back here to St. George's College. The second innings. Pirouse setting a very competitive total of 171 to win. And uh, the, the ground staff have come on at the interval to repaint the lines. And we're just waiting here. Looks like Cole Eckstein is the man who's been tasked with opening us up in the second innings and this run chase. Here come Vintok Batsman off your screens. Number zero zero four one seven. Yes, round of applause. And uh, Ryan Moffat and Hanro Bardenhorst are going to be the batsmen who will be taking the first ball here. Call X team to get us underway. Right on medium seamer and wide wall signal first up. Macmillan does well to get down the leg side there. Pull up. Again. No run. Just a reminder that Vintok need 171 to win here. Competitive total set. Pushed into covers. And he was high and dry there if he had hit. But he manages to get himself off the mark and off strike. And the new man, Chris Ryan Moffat, to face Eckstein from the Botanical Garden ends. Back of a length. Dot ball, well fielded off his own bowling. Eckstein, please get me some scores. Pitched up, mode, 
into the leg side boundary for one. Is there not one to come? There's still one ball to come, umpire. One more to come. There was a wide off the first ball. So four for no loss. Still one to come in this first over. Easy single on the onside there for Vintok College. So at the end of the first over, it's five for no loss. Some updates from the fields around us. Churchill are 29 for no loss after 3.1, chasing 111 to win against St. George's. And Hellenic Academy, 153 for 8, with 7 to come. Seven balls left in that innings. So they're doing quite well there, Atlantic Academy. So Mills to open up from the Hartman House end here. Left arm round and a big swing and a miss there. So encouraging signs for young Mills. Short. There's a man out there, but does well to bounce. And one run to the total. Again, back of a link, no run. A little bit fuller there. Half appeal from the bowler. Keeper wasn't interested. That's normally an indication. Use of the crease. And quick single into the covers. Seven for no loss of uh, Vintuk. In the slot. And taken comfortably on the boundary there. Six runs. Good catch by the spectators on the boundary there. So at the end, second over, we took uh, 13 for no loss. They require further 158. Cody Marillia has now been brought into the attack from the Botanical Garden end. Moffat on strike. Full pitched up and wicket first up. Catch there from Eckstein at mid on.
Timing has jumped just right. And first ball, first wicket for Pidhouse. That'll definitely calm young Marilia nerves down. So in works, walks, Gerard. The ball of that wicket. One, two, three, break. Follows up with a back of length ball there. So two dots to start the over here for Marilia. On the other fields, Churchill are 41 for no loss, chasing 111 to win. And Hellenic Academy have set St. John's a target of 161 in their 20 overs. Ball signal by the umpire, so free hit. And he swings at that. Great take, but remember it's a free hit, so he can't be out. So another run to the total. You're nearly in for a shot, big boy. Again, Marilia finding that back of a line, of a link line. So tidy over so far. The one blemish of the no ball overstepping, but he has picked up the crucial wicket. Side edge. Great take there from McMillan. Stuck out the left mitt and saved a couple of runs for a side there. Side edge down to fine leg for just the single. So at the end of the third over, that takes the totals to 16 for one. They do require another 155 or for 102 balls. That required run rate creeping slightly. They need to go at nines if they're going to keep up with the run rate. They're currently striking at fives at the moment. Eckstein. So change of end for Cole Eckstein. Prefers running up the hill from the Hartman House.
single down to the deep midwicket boundary. Janssen van Rensburg back on strike. McMillan is it swinging? Not. Straight back to the bowler for none. So good over so far for X Dean. Three and a half gone, 18 for one. Good lines and lengths here from the Peterhouse bowlers. Short. And absolutely drilled for six. Janssen van Rensburg's a strong young lad. Punishes anything short. So six more to the total. 24 for the loss of one wicket. One, one, dot, six. Loud shout of near, which means no, he didn't want that run at all. So dot ball to end the over there. 24 for the loss of one wicket after four. Tidy over there from X team, barring the six. And again, Marilia running in from long on to have another over here. Really. <coughs> oh, in the slot and absolutely dispatched for six. Over the corporate tents. Big hit from Janssen van Rensburg. I think that's probably the fact that Morelli had to run all the way from long on to the top of his mark. Expending more energy and getting into his mark than in his run up. Just an update from Weaver Field. Churchill are 55 for one after 6.4, chasing 111 to win. And St. John's inning has, has just got underway. They are one for no loss.
Pitched up again. Down to middle for one. Positive cricket here shown from Janssen van Rensburg. He wants to try and keep the scoreboard ticking as often as possible. Brings Barden up. Carved into the covers, but great fielding there. From the man of the moment, Arnold. He saved his side a certain couple of runs there. Pitched up again. Bardenhorst obliges by nudging it into the deep and wicked boundary for one. Good field placement there from the captain of Peter House. Is that the captain fielding it? He's put himself there, taking responsibility for the team. In. Straying offline there, and four more runs. So the score is moving on quite nicely here for Vintuk. It's 36 for one after five. Really, just a little offensive there in a second over. Taranika has now brought himself onto into the attack from the Hartman House end. <laughs> Giving himself some room as Bardenors. Taranika won't mind that too much. He had to try and manipulate himself to get that off the square. It's a good line. Solid. Can't score off that line and length. Again, good line and length from Matonika. Two dot balls. Pitched up, and he's taken the catch comfortably on the boundary. What happened? Uh, no, I don't. The twelfth man's gone. Could the Bilas twelfth man please make his way back to the scorers? Great catch there on the boundary, nonetheless. Taranika gets the breakthrough. Was uh, James Gow on the boundary there taking the catch? Umpire is just having a tat to see if he had gone over the boundary. And uh, the decision has been made. So the dangerous Janssen van Rensburg has to go, and he's back in the shed for 19. And uh, Zach Janssen van Furen now makes his way to the crease. 37 for 2 after 5.4 and the bowling change has brought about the wicket. Yeah, 
Vincent from, from Fuel Room. And pitched up through the covers. Great shot there from Janssen from Furen. Four more to the total. Good way to get himself off the mark and uh, immediately gets his confidence up. Following up with a good delivery was Captain Taranika. And that ends his over. He picked up the crucial wicket of the powerful hitting Janssen van Rensburg. So at the end of the sixth, Winter College find themselves 41 for two. Score. Churchill are 69 for two after 8.3, chasing 110 on Weaver. And there's been a change of ends here for Mills. He's bowling now from the Botanical Garden end. Left arm round and floating one up just outside the off stump. Missing the edge of the bat. St. John's are off to a comfortable start. They're 19 for no loss after two on Connell Field. Use of the crease there from Baden North. Pushed it to the deep cover boundary and comfortably back for two. Are the boys from Namibia. So two more runs to the total, 43 for two. Again, into the covers. And direct hit. What do you say, Ump? Not out. It was close. Great fielding there in the covers by Sean Bennett. One stump to aim at. And he hit. The umpire says not out, unfortunately. Again, back of a length to Bennett. Quick single. Pushing hard, but only the one. Eyes lit up there to Barton Horst. Quicker, shorter, through Bennett. And uh, only a single. So not a bad over there for Mills. And the end of the seventh over. Vintour find themselves 46 for two. They still require nine and over. 125 now needed of 78 is the equation. Was it out? Who's that? Who's that? Do you know? Uh, it's David Shawani. David, David Shawani. David Shawani. Shawani. It doesn't look like a Pereira at the other end, is it? Uh, that's a piece of ice, uh, This one. Taranika, again, from the Hartman House end, giving himself room. Was Barton was cut in half. Great ball there from the offspin of Pidas.
again using the crease but umpires signaling a wide there so Matarin one again deep in the crease again nudged into the offside for one Tarnika won't mind that the batsmen are have, having to create their own space he's batting tight lines as the young lad on the slog sweep just over the forward square's head so Janssen van Furen lives to fight another day. The cricketing guards were on his side there. No run. So after 7.4, Vintok find themselves 49 for 2. Tossed up and Barnos obliges, but what a fielding effort there from young Marilia. He takes the catch. Is it XT? That's Marilia. That's over there. My mistake, x -team on the boundary, took the catch. But uh, just landed over the boundary. I've got the benefit of the replay. Yeah, unlucky. You were just over the boundary before you threw it back in, young man. But great effort. along nicely 24 25 and after the eighth the score line is 56 for two <laughs> Churchill boys find themselves semi Mills to continue from the Botanical Garden in and uh, just the one down to Longhoff. That brings Janssen from Furen on strike. Slower. To X team who makes no mistake this time. So Mills tossing it up. And getting the much needed breakthrough. This partnership with 20 of as many balls. So 57 for three. And Janssen van Furen, the victim. And then walks young Kristen Lowe. Wicked, sounds like it. So Barnos on strike. They managed to cross while that ball was in the air. Again, tossing it up just outside the old stump. Across the line. Coming back for the second. Good running there from the boys from Namibia. 
positive cricket. Slow on the leg side into the gap. And Captain Mataranika does the tidying up there. Another two to the total, so 61 now for three of 8.4 are Vintuk College. Tossing it up outside the off stump. And uh, Barnmore's eyes lit up again. Going for the big swing. Fortunately taking his eyes off the ball there. Deep in his crease. Down to the sweeper on the offside. Just the one. So at the end of the ninth over, themselves shared. Sorry, Nico again. No, Sean Bennett. What does he bowl? Left, right. Right arm. So, change of bowling here from the Hartman House end. Sean Bennett into the attack, replacing the skipper. Looking to turn his off spinners. Straight back down past the bowler. Cut off comfortably by Bennett. I mean Eckstein rather. Just the one. Low. Off the mark. The single down the ground. St. John's have just lost the wicket, 30 for 1 now. Short. All Barton Norse can do is get it down the ground for a single. Benner won't mind this too much. Thrown up a little bit. Oh, great fielding there at Cover by Captain Mataranika, putting his body on the line for his side, but still another single. Using the crease, finding the under edge of the bat, so dot ball. Ben Bennett. Eckstein making great ground there. And another fantastic catch on the boundary. So Bennett, last ball of the over, picking up the win. And the set batsman, Bardenhorst, has gone for 32. So Pirahs feeling a bit more confident now. And at the fall of that wicket, the skipper, Jack Parker, now finds himself at the crease. He said to me at the toss that he did want to bowl first. But I'm sure he didn't want to be chasing 171. So good effort here so far from the boys from Marindera. Mills to continue from the botanical garden end. He's bowled three overs, one for 19 so far. Bardenhorst took a liking to his bowling in the last over. 
but he will be burning at the new batter, Jack Parker. Tosses it up outside the off stump, but no run. Parker only manages to get it back to the bowler. Again, slower, beating the outside half of the bat. Good start to the 10th, the 11th over. Ooh, another wicket. Using his feet is Parker. Down the ground for one, so he's off the mark. Brings low back on strike. Dot ball there. So some news from the other Churchill. Uh, 94 for 4. Short through the covers, but brilliantly stopped there from Bennett. Churchill 94 for 4 after. 13.4 overs, and St. John's have just lost another wicket. They find themselves. 34 for two. They are in the fifth over of their innings of St. John's, chasing 164, if I'm not mistaken. So at the end of the 11th over, It took uh, 68 for 4, requiring 103, so virtually needing two runs of ball to get through to the India. Bennett, still from the Hartman House end. That's missed everything. Well bold. Much shorter there from Bennett. Down the ground from low. Brings lost another wicket, 34 for three. So making hard work of this run chase. Lock quicker through the air there from Bennett. Another dot ball. Eleven and a half gone. Slog sweep comes out. But only for one. So another run to the total. Seventy for four after eleven point four. Tossed up. Govan does well to ride that bounce. And just keep it down to the one. Marilia also had to be on the skates there. Been missing that ball. Govan again. So another single. And at the end of the 12th over, Vintok are 72 for 4. That required run rate is crept up over 12 now. 99 or 48 is the equation. And with that, Mills has been replaced. He's bowled his 4 overs for 21. He's been replaced by Daniil Govan. A name synonymous with Pilaus. A lot of Govans have gone through the great falls there. Right 
right hand medium. Right hand medium. Looking to bowl his right arm medium paces, yeah, is Govan. <laughs> Short. Don't do much about that. Just cut off on the boundary. Just. So, two more runs. Added to the total. 74 for 4 now. Oh, Vintuk. Wide. Umpire Shane. Getting some exercise. Glad to see Silo wake up. No run. So good comeback there from Govan. Finding his radar now. Churchill are 101 for four now, chasing 110 to win. And uh, they've still got 50 balls to get over the line. Heaved into the leg side field there by Captain Parker. 4 1. Who's that fielding in number 4? Oh. Mills just not finding his target with that throw. Could have caused overthrows there. Slow ball. Down the ground. By low. Won't mind that, Will Peterhaus. Five of the over so far. Two to come. Down the ground to Eckstein. I heard him earlier complaining that he was becoming a magnet for the ball. Dot to end the over there, so not a bad over for Govan. Going for eight. At the end of the 13th over, it's 78 for four. And this run chase is starting to get away from the boys from Namibia. Even 93 or 42 balls. They need 13.3 and over, and they're only going at sixes. Any changes in scores? <laughs> Turtle, PE, St. George's, the Lennox St. Lennox St. John's. Bennett still on from Hotman House's end. And breaking news St. George's have lost by six wickets. Churchill winning their first game of the tournament against the hosts. And a quite a convincing win. Parker using his feet again, but Bennett wise to the task. Firing it in a bit, a bit quicker. Again, interested in that run out attempt. Kristen Lowe making it quite comfortably. Oh, 
look like he got off but straight into the hands of Kieran Arnold. Great take there of the deep boundary. So another loss of wicket there. And uh, after 13 and a half, Vintok are 81 for 5. St. John's. St. John's are 47 for 3 after 8.2. Patel to Ewing. Led to believe that it was stroked along the ground to third man for 1. Okay. So 81 for 5 and then walks Henry van Fake. And the loss of that wicket, Christian Lowe, the victim there, Bennett, short and taken on the boundary by Arnold. So one into deep cover. But fake now on strike. Left hander. Always difficult for bowlers to get into their rhythm from the left and right hand combination. Good over so far from Bennett. He's gone for the solitary four runs, picking up another wicket. Chipped into the covers for a single. Again, I don't think Peter House will mind that. It ends the 14th over, 83 for 5. And Govan has been given another over. So, Vintok need 14 and a half. And over if they want to get over the line here. Big target set of 171 by Pidas and their innings. Highlighted by 50s from Gao and Arnold. So good batting effort there from the Pidas unit. Go over to continue from the Botanical Garden end. Choosing to stay over the wicket. of a length, no run. So dot to start the 15th over. Guided to short third man for one. Barker into the covers for one. 86 required now. Down the ground by Fun Fake.
tidy over so far from Govan. Just the three gone off of it. Pitches it up. And Mills, great effort there on the boundary, but parries it over the line for six. So six more to the total. Parker moves on nice, nicely to 18, 92 for five. Good follow up there, full straight, can't do much with that. So at the end of 15, Fintok are now 92 for 5, requiring a further 15.8 and over. St. John's are 57 for 3 after 9, chasing 160. Another match that was going on is done and dusted. Churchill winning their first game of the tournament, beating the hosts. Convincingly by six wickets. Bennett to finish up his quota from the Hartman House end. Gentle full toss on the legs of Van Vig, but only for one. It's a good fielding there on the boundary from Pidaus. Luke, are you impressed with your brother's performance so far? Are you just saying that because I asked you on, on the PA system? <laughs> One round on there. Oh, quick work there from Macmillan. And he's got him. Great hands there from the keeper. Stumped. And fun fake. His short stay to the crease has come to an end. Bennett luring him out with a wider one outside of Stump. And Macmillan doing the rest. Quick as a flash was Macmillan. Great hands there from the keeper from Piraus. And uh, at the fall of that wicket, in walks Ramsey McDonald for Vintuk. They now find themselves 94 for 6. Fifth half gone. Bennett has picked up three wickets for 15. Three to come. And uh, with that delivery, has found himself on a hat trick. Bold, clean through the gate. We have seen one hat trick today from the fast bowler from St. Andrews, eh? Bert White, from that end. So, could that be a good omen for Bennett? No pressure. I'm sure the Peter's parents sitting there will be crossing everything for you. Okay. Also got some old boys on the far side. Ninety-four for seven are Vintuk. Oh, 
unlucky. Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It's not often that you get put on a hat trick. Well done, young man. On the hips now, turned around corner. Running hard. Now oh, the Vintok batsman and easily coming back for the second. In other news, St. John's find themselves 66 for four. Chasing 160, 161 to win. At the end of the 16th over, 96 for seven. Bennett figures four overs, four feet. Well done, young man. Good effort there. And uh, Govan's been taken out of the attack. Eckstein now coming back on from the end where he started. Nudged into the covers for one. XT and you bowled from both ends, which one do you prefer? It's a signal that he prefers a send. Hint, hint, captain, keep him on the send. Wrapped him on the pads, and uh, Shawani obliges. He's given him. So, Yandre Schlichter's brief stint at the crease has come to an end. All sorts of trouble now are Bintuk College. They're 9 7 for 8. And uh, at the fall of that wicket, in walks Franco Bach. Umpire is just confirming that that was the right decision. Fist pump there. What's the captain's name? Mataranika. Mataranika. See why you keep him on this end. So good fielding on the boundary there. Next scene, absolutely castled him. Middle stump out the ground. And I think he's just proving his case to the captain. I told you I wanted a ball from this end and you put me on the other end. Two wickets in as many balls. Vintuk now find themselves 98 for 9. So in walks. Hello, Ita. Back of a link. Last ball of the over. Again, back of the link. Top ball. Brilliant over there from Cole Eckstein. Picking Vintuk find themselves 98 for 9. And if they're going to pull a miracle here, yeah, they need a further 20. Four runs and over. They need 73 off the last three and Matari Nika has brought himself back onto the attack. He's bowled two for 15, two overs for 15 runs, picking up an early wicket.
pushed into the mid-wicket region for nothing. Heaved into the long on boundary. Franco back, another run to his name. 98 for 9. 99 rather for 9. Floating it up there. Just creeping over the square leg's head. And that's 100 up for Vintok. They've showed some good fight in this game, but maybe not enough. Down the ground, firmly struck. Berg wanting to eat a obliging. Berg comes in. Matonika just too casual there in collecting the ball. So two more runs to the total. Faster through the air now. Down the ground to Eckstein. He tidies up just the one. Slower, much slower through the air. And uh, Ita blocks that back. So at the end of the 18th, Vintok are 104 for 9. They're chasing 67 to win. 30 half runs and over required. And uh, Eckstein has been given one more by Skip Mataranika from his favoured botanical garden end. Down the leg side. Great take there from McMillan. Bit of an effort ball there from X Dean, but wide. There's the marketing director of Zim Cricket, Tino Moyo. Hello, Tino. Exxon Cricketer. Back of a leg. Over Mills's head into the safeguard tent. Six runs. So, back, not dying, wondering. Nelson up. 1-1-1 one, one, one for nine. Drilled down the ground. Just the one to Captain Matonika. 112 on the board now. 18 and a half gone. Dropping it back of a length there. It was 16. Dot ball. Eater into the deep and wicked boundary. Mills tidies up. Just the one. One more ball to come in this 19th over. Back on strike now. And wide of the stumps, but gets away with it. So at the end of the 19th over, 113 for 9. It's been a great effort from the boys from Marindera. They've put 171 runs on the board and they've defended it well. Eaters on strike, boys. And girls.
down to long on and he's dropped it straight down his throat unfortunately just dropping the catch the half centurion james gar first blemish of the game Uh, Yorking himself. Great ball there from Atari Nika. No run. side just for the one so it brings Ita back on strike there's a one there 115 for nine needs a Q end of the bat Govin racing after it back not wanting to give up the strike there so one Back into the leg side field for the single. Last ball. Wow, that's game. That's game over. So, Piras comfortably in this game. Too powerful for the boys from Namibia, were the boys from Marindera. Well done. They off to winning ways in this trophy event. Come on parents, I'm sure you can make some noise for your sons. A little bit more than that. Moffat, 3. Bardenhorst, 32. Van Janse van Rensburg, 19. Jansen van Furen and Lowe, 6 apiece. Parker, 20. Van Veek, 4. McDonald out first ball. Schlichter, 2. Berg and Eater finishing on 8 and 11 respectively. Just too much on the board for Vintok to chase down. They only managed to get 117. A very big well done to Pete House. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, from Madden Field for the day. We will be back here bright and early. First ball to be bowled at 8 o'clock. See you tomorrow.